Hi everyone, it's Paul from the library and tonight we have another live stream in the ongoing gallery walk talk series which is the first Wednesday of every month and it is a series that's hosted by Mary Zunick with the Hot Springs Area Cultural Alliance to talk about one of Hot Springs most famous art centric traditions, Hot Springs Gallery Walk. And each month Mary interviews a local artist. This month, the guest is going to be Patrick Cunningham, who is a uh, local artist whose work can be seen at the Legacy Fine Art Gallery downtown. And this interview was actually pre-recorded in advance. Uh, Mary isn't able to be with us live tonight, but uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments for her or the guest, Patrick Cunningham, you can just leave those in the comment section. And as soon as Mary is back and available, I'm sure she will be happy to answer all of those. And I'm sure she'll be live with us on the air again next month on the first Wednesday. So give me just a moment and I'm going to get the their great interview that we recorded about a week ago uh, posted and you enjoy. Thanks so much for having me on the air. Uh, we really appreciate uh, uh, the partnership with the library that it enables us to really spotlight our arts community and share a little bit of information, not just about Gallery Walk, but also an actual interview with one of our artists, which I'll be visiting with Patrick Cunningham a little bit later. But before we get started, let's find out what will be happening during Gallery Walk, um, the 33rd anniversary of Gallery Walk. Gallery Walk started back in 1989. Um, in the late 80s, um, artists and galleries had moved into um, many of the, the vacant storefronts um, and really were a vital part of the revitalization of downtown Hot Springs. And so Gallery Walk sprang out of that when the gallery owners kind of got together and decided, you know, what a great way to bring people downtown, um, because in the late 80s, not many local folks went downtown. Um, so it really acted to bring people downtown, art lovers, and drew visitors from downtown, and it still does today. 33 years later, first Friday of every single month. And so um, let's get started and find out a little bit about what else is going to be happening to celebrate um, Gallery Walk, 33rd anniversary of Gallery Walk on August 5th. Okay, so Paul, I'm, I've got my screen shared and I'll pull up my slideshow here. Um, there we go. So 33 years. And as a part of that celebration, um, the Hot Springs Area Cultural Alliance is going to be at the galleries um, or have volunteers at all of the galleries to offer up a toast um, to kick off the 33rd anniversary and really to offer a toast up to the gallery owners and to all of the artists. You know, these gallery owners opening up, open up their space, they, they stay open late, they hang new exhibits, um, the artists come in. It's really a lot of work to put on a gallery walk each month. Not addition, not, not to mention the expense, if refreshments are served. And so I ask, you know, I, I just want to um, suggest that when you're in so when you're in the galleries either during gallery walk or any other time please thank them um, and when it's time to shop for uh, gifts go visit your downtown galleries and just and support our galleries and our local artists but join um, the cultural alliance at five o'clock on gallery walk night and offer up a toast to celebrate 33 years that will be in all of the participating galleries Esther's um, gallery will start over now gallery walk when it first started was primarily on Central Avenue within just a few blocks, but now we've kind of spread out um, and are located not just downtown hot springs, but Esther's is over on Broadway kind of across the street from the um, hot springs fire department on Broadway. And Esther's is um, one of our newer galleries, opened back in 19 or in 2021. And um, you'll see a couple of examples of the artwork that's hanging there. Um, the one on the left, the Caddo River, is by Ryan Rooney. Now, Ryan Rooney is also the artist who created the design for the Hot Springs Water Tower that's over right off of the bypass. So not just a water tower, but actually a piece of artwork with his design on the water tower. But you can see Ryan Rooney's other work at Esther's. Um, and I love this fun piece on the right um, by Justin Warwick. Karma and Frankie Goes to Hollywood. 
Um, Justin's work is so bright and uh, vibrant colors and and uh, really, really beautiful and different. And in addition to the artist hanging in the gallery at Esther's, there's almost going to be like an arts festival um, in the parking lot adjacent to Esther's. Um, G for Sims has uh, offered up that space and next to Ambrosia, um, the Ambrosia parking lot, and there will be a number of artists set up there. So almost like an arts festival and a gallery walk. On down on Central Avenue, Justice Gallery. Now, Justice, um, you know, the gallery walk is 33 years old, but Justice Fine Art Gallery, Dolores Justice, the very talented artist, can be seen there as well. She opened her gallery on the 15th anniversary of gallery, gallery Walk, so this will be 18 years for Justice Fine Art Gallery. And um, you'll see there work by Re Rebecca Thompson and um, Jerry Hillis um, and a wide um, variety of other artwork um, available at Justice Gallery is there. Randall Good, Gary Simmons, Matthew Hasty, and others. Um, those are the featured artists for this month. Um, Randall Good has some amazing work in a rather large exhibit there hanging at Justice Gallery. So I encourage you to be sure and stop by there on Gallery Walk. And now Jerry Hillis, you'll be hearing a little bit more about Jerry Hillis in just a few minutes because in addition to her work at Justice Gallery, um, there'll also be a reception for Jerry um, just down the hill, just down the street at the Ozark Bathhouse. Um, Rebecca Peterman Photography, um, her photography studio and exhibit space is located on the second floor of Spencer's Corner. Um, it's, she has a series currently called 50, um, the 5050 Portrait Story Series for Women Over 50 and the ways women transform as they age. So um, when you're out for gallery walk, make the trek up to the second floor of Spencer's Corner and check out Rebecca Peterman Photography. All Things Arkansas. Now, All Things Arkansas, a lot of people think of that as just a gift stop um, for, for our visitors or when you need to send a gift from Hot Springs. But um, All Things Arkansas, in addition to having All Things from Arkansas, they have uh, represent a variety of different artists with ceramic artists, glass, um, and um, other artists and artwork. And many times you'll even be able to catch some live music at All Things Arkansas as the owner's son, uh, Ben Carey, is a very talented artist. He's been on tour a lot lately, so I'm not sure if he'll be there for gallery walk in August, but it's a nice treat when you catch him there. Now, American Art Gallery, American Art Gallery is actually our oldest art gallery, and it has been open continuously since 1989, um, had a change of ownership, and it's changed, expanded its uh, name from Arkansas Art Gallery to American Art Gallery several years ago, but Anne and Willie Gilbert, Anne was uh, at the very first gallery walk and she continues that tradition at American Art Gallery and you can see artwork there by Galia Gilbert and um, Southwest Jewelry by Ernie Ballou as, a, as well as a variety of other artists and gift items at American Art Gallery. And as we trek on down Central Avenue you'll come to Artist Workshop Gallery and now Artist Workshop Gallery is kind of like a cooperative almost, um, or a cooperative. Um, it's owned and operated by over 25 local artists, and they offer a wide variety of paintings, including watercolor, acrylic, oil, pastel. Um, and this month, each month, they have a different featured artist. This month, their artists are Pat Langlis and Jim Raymer. Now, Pat Langlis, you can see her work there on the right. Um, beautiful watercolor, but she also, she also has gorgeous scarves. In fact, my favorite scarf is a Pat Langlis scarf, and you can see uh, those scarves and her lovely artwork at Artist Workshop Gallery. And then Jim Raymer is the other um, artist there. You can see his work on the, um, the left. 
Now, Wrapped Gift Boutique is Hot Springs' newest gallery, and it is it kind of combines a high a high quality um, Hot Springs or Arkansas gift items with um, some of our local artists. You can see one of Allison Parsons' um, new works on the right there. That's from her Lake Hamilton Sunset series, a brand new series of artwork that um, I think the paint is probably barely dry on. But it's acrylic uh, composition, gold leaf, and silver leaf. Beautiful. I mean, they just sparkle when you see them in person. Um, also at Wrapped Gift Boutique, you can see artwork by Riley Art Class. Um, beautiful artwork by Charles and Michael Riley. Their studio is located here in Hot Springs, but there's a wide variety of different uh, pieces of Riley Art Class available at Wrapped Gift Boutique. And you all mentioned Jerry Hillis earlier, um, whose artwork um, can be seen at Justice Gallery. But in 2021, um, Jerry Hillis was the artist in residence at Hot Springs National Park. And the artwork created as a result of that residency will be on display. Reception will be sponsored by Friends of the National Park. And uh, Many Hot Springs area artists have been artists in residence at Hot Springs National Park, but not just our local artists. People come from across the country to be an artist in residence at our national park. And so we're really fortunate to be able to see the artwork that was inspired by Jerry's time as an artist in residence. So cross over the street and pop into the Ozark bathhouse. Not only do you get to see Jerry's work, but you can see artwork from other uh, previous artists in residence there at the Ozark bathhouse as well. Gallery Central. Now, Gallery Central is located, it, for many people remember, it was a little bit further down Gallery, uh, down Central Avenue um, near the, in the 800 block, I think, but now it's at 340A Central Avenue. It's on the first floor of the Waters Hotel, um, and Laura Scott is the owner. She um, has a it's a nice little boutique in addition to being um, having some, some lovely artwork. Both of these pieces that you can see here are uh, Polly Cook um, acrylic work um, in a wide variety of different um, sizes. She has also um, Janice Polychron, um, James Hayes Glass, uh, Sandy Newberg, and Houston Lou Spirit Tiles. Um, so it's in addition to being a gallery, it's a great gift shop as well. Um, there out on the first floor of the Waters Hotel. Um, and now let's turn the corner and head up Whittington Avenue. Now at Whittington Avenue, you can see, you can visit um, Dryden Pottery. There are three galleries actually located up um, Whittington Avenue. Dryden Pottery um, has been in Hot Springs for over 75 years. And Zach uh, Dryden is the third generation of the Dryden family to create these beautiful, vibrant colored ceramic pieces of pottery um, in Hot Springs. In addition to Zach Dryden and Dryden Pottery, you can also, they'll also be featuring um, artwork by Richard or Rip Evans. Um, he began using oil paint when he was just a teenager. He attended um, art school in D Detroit in the mid 60s and then embarked on a 50 year career as a commercial artist. So he continues to be an oil painter, but stop by Dryden Pottery and see the beautiful pottery, but you can also see um, work by Rip Evans, which I think that's the first time he has um, exhibited in the Hot Springs. So that'll be a nice treat. And um, thanks to Dryden for bringing him to Hot Springs. Um, Emergent Arts is in the same parking lot as Dryden Pottery. Um, and Emergent Arts is a great arts um, organization that offers um, exhibit space, classes for emerging artists of all ages. Um, and not just not just visual art, but they do writing classes and dance. And just to, I encourage you to check out their website, emergentarts.org. But for Gallery Walk at their Circle Gallery at Emergent Arts, the Primetime Painters. Now, Primetime Painters are, it's a group of artists who get together um, weekly and they meet at Emergent Arts and Paint. And so it'll be um, a great exhibit there at um, the Circle Gallery. 
on down Central Avenue, or Central, on Whittington, we have the Whittington Gallery and Studios. Um, in addition to the um, dozens of artists, over 50 artists that display their work at um, Whittington Gallery, um, Whittington's also started offering a number of workshops and um, they have some children's workshops, drop-in workshops available this summer. So stop into Whittington Gallery and uh, see the fine art that's on exhibit there and sculptural work. But if you have visitors in town, um, you know, check out their schedule for art classes and experiences for for those who like to create of all ages. Okay, now we're gonna get back around the corner to Legacy Fine Art Gallery. And um, uh, on, during gallery walk on, um, the, uh, on August 5th, Byron Taylor, one of the featured artists at Legacy Gallery, will be doing a live painting during gallery walk. And you can see one of his pieces there on the right. Um, extremely nice fellow and uh, in addition to being a, a talented artist um, so what fun to be able to see art being created so don't miss legacy gallery and another artist at our legacy gal at legacy gallery is today and that is patrick cunningham we'll be seeing some more of his artwork but let me tell you a little bit about patrick before we meet him um, he it's a Hot Springs area artist, and he's what has been influenced by a love of art and history to develop a philosophical way of looking at life and the world around him. Patrick was born in California and knew at an early age what he wanted to do with his life. His childhood passion for history and art ultimately led him to develop the old master style for which he's known. Oil paintings are his primary medium, but portraiture, sculpture, and figurative abstraction are also part of his work. Patrick also believes in lifelong learning pursuit that is essential to one's growth as an artist. His studies have taken him to Siri, Italy, a small Tuscan village where he studied fresco techniques under Italian masters, and to France where he studied mural design. Patrick's work resides in numerous private collections across the United States and Europe. Um, and we'll be seeing some of his artwork today, but truly around the world, paintings for the Galapagos Art Museum. I probably didn't uh, do that justice. Um, in Athens, uh, two large paintings for the Cardenas Seventh-day Adventist Church in Cardenas, Cuba, a 40-foot mural of Venice, Italy for Heartscape in Los Angeles, um, and numerous paintings at um, murals at Diamond Bank locations, a bronze bust commissioned by the Swedish bank by a Swedish banker at Tab Bynum. Um, and we'll see some more of his artwork. So um, I I would ask that Paul um, bring bring me back up or put the slideshow down and we're going to meet Patrick. Patrick um, and Paul will will um, put the slide to put the camera back up for us here in just a minute. Um, but I'd like to, to visit with you and get to know you a little bit more and we'll talk about some of your artwork. Um, well, actually, why don't we just go ahead and get started looking at artwork and then we'll visit some more about your your experience when we finish looking at your artwork. Okay. Okay. Oh, whoops. I got a little carried away there. We don't want to go that fast. So now here are a couple of examples of your um, nativity work and your bronze bust. Now, what is what was your background or your study with um, with sculpture? Uh, my background studying sculpture and mostly self-taught. Oh wow! Yeah, and uh, I have a, a great interest in archaeology. And I happened to be reading about uh, the Great Wall of China, and scientists were very interested in how the mortar held up for many centuries. And I discovered uh, one of my secret formulas for uh, the sculpture and nativity scene was uh, in the, the mortar of the Great Wall of China, they actually added sticky rice. 
and it acts as a binder. I have a great interest in chemistry too, so so I came up with my own formula that made the Portland cement and diatomaceous earth and sticky rice to form a Portland cement that worked like clay. So, so the sticky rice is like a binder and gives it uh, a longevity to the sculpture. Wow, so like you're, you're um, inspired by work all over the world, draw yeah. inspiration from all over the world for your work. Yeah. Um, now, how, how did you find out about that? Oh, I just read a lot. You read a lot, that's excellent. That's <laughs> I excellent. have a big, I probably have a collection of art books, maybe like 400 art books oh, that wow. I can collect. Uh, but in the alternative, most artists use would be properly fiberglass. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted something that um, lasted a long time. And now um, this is Joseph for the nativity scene at the reserve. So is that located here in Hot Springs? It is. Excellent. Now, how many pieces did you do for the nativity? Uh, last summer, I did three pieces, the Virgin Mary, uh, Jesus, and uh, St. Joseph. Okay. And then I built, actually built the, a structure of the uh, the manger. Oh, excellent! And that do that is it? Will it stand up to the L? Yeah. That, that that stood up pretty well. Yeah. Uh, but will your sculpture is it for inside or outside? For outside. Wow, it's um, beautiful. Yeah. The colors are so gorgeous. Yeah. So the nativity, the uh, manger, I actually. Uh, constructed it so it could break down and put away. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a little background in construction. So I did parts of it, the walls, like I wanted to look real old. So I did that drive it technique uh, that, that they do on banks and commercial buildings, but I uh, aged it and deliberately cracked it. Oh, wow. So it yeah. looks it looks like it's uh, it yeah. looks like it's ancient like old stone work mm -hmm. and, and now can you tell us about the bronze bust on the right was that the one commissioned by the banker oh yes uh i'm friends with his father and uh he uh flew in from sweden and i took extensive uh, photographs and then uh measurements and uh did several preliminary uh sketches and then um, i sculpted the piece out of like an oil clay and and built a armature first and then the, i have some great friends out royal uh, Bree harris and, mm -hmm. and david harris and uh after i finished the oil clay sculpture they made the mold and actually uh did the bronze casting for me and then they brought it back to me and I cleaned it up and uh, we we got it finished. Well, it's beautiful. Now, have you done um, very much bronze bronze work? No, that's my only one. Oh, really? Uh -huh. That's quite a process, isn't it? Too, oh, to do yeah. the sculptural work. And then were you, <laughs> were you pleased with how it turned out? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. it's gorgeous. It's so nice. Yeah, I think I got a good likeness. Yes. And I love his hair. Got, yes. Uh, so it's kind of like a juxtaposition of like an old he showed me a bus that uh the whole idea got started is quite interesting uh, his wife saw a bronze bust in a european museum and she said hey tab that looks kind of like you and then they got the ball rolling and wanted me to uh, make a bust now is it something you'd like to do again to do oh, bronze sure. work? oh i love doing the sculpture yeah Oh, I did do a, a large sculpture for the Pentecostal Church in North Morocco. It's an angel with like 11 foot wingspan. Oh, wow. And that was a challenge. I like challenging things where I want something really difficult. Yes. <laughs> That's a challenge. So I welded up a large armature mm -hmm. uh, of the angel and almost built it like they build floats in New Orleans, mm -hmm. where you build like a cage almost. And then I came up with a composite material for the outside. And oh. So it is 
quite large and we hung it with an air, one single aircraft cable. Oh, wow. So it's actually hanging, hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. How heavy was it? Oh, like a thousand pounds. Wow. Yeah, they actually were building the church. So they left the back wall mm -hmm. uh, open and we drove a crane inside the building. So we had to hang the wings uh, with aircraft bolts that bolted together hanging from the ceiling. So, wow. So you did quite a bit of sacred work. I mean, religious, religious inspired work, or it seems like from looking through, or, or no, just is that uh, just because it's more, you're more of the master, inspired by the master, maybe? Yeah, that is more an inspiration by the master. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's move on to um, now. I love this piece. Now, is this piece at Legacy? Or oh, no, a private, it's a private collector. This is so fun because, I mean, who doesn't love? B.B. King and Eric Clapton. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, is this uh, oil or? That's a mixed medium. Was it a commission or? No, I just saw photographs and, and loved the idea. Plus, I love like classic cars too. Oh. You got the Cadillac, you know. And um, so, so one thing that interested me in this was uh, the uh, back to paint formulas. I, I love the reflection of the windshield. Mm -hmm. I, I want, that was a challenge for me to make that iridescent kind of reflection because I, I, I'm very detail oriented. Um, the side of the car as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's extremely detailed. Yeah, love the blues. Oh, do you like the blues? That's yeah. Your, your, <laughs> So did you ever consider any, other than being an artist, did you ever consider any other careers? Uh, uh, I was an electrician for like seven years. Oh, were you really? I, it's like, hey, you have to have another job being an artist. <laughs> that, whole, that whole theory or that whole saying of starving artist, you gotta have, you gotta have a day job. Thing. Yeah, but I still did a lot of artwork and that construction experience, I really, uh, and I am thankful for it because I would look at other tradesmen, how they constructed things, and that's actually crossed over into my fabricating sculptures and just the knowledge of. Oh, absolutely. I think yeah. that is very valuable. To, yeah. you know, many artists probably don't have that experience in their, in their background. Yeah, welding and all that. Now, Maison 226, that is a new Airbnb um, on, what street is that? It's not Prospect. Long. Prospect, that's it, on Prospect. Um, it's a beautiful, um, I can tell you Eisenhower did a great job for not just restoring that building, much of the historic, um, the historic, materials in the buildings had been removed and so they went back in and just with a lot of love and devotion and care um, restored the building and um, these are beautiful pieces oh, now can, can you tell us the size of these pieces or approximately are uh, they close to being like four foot by eight foot tall wow. yeah yeah and there it's actually a seco fresco 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 technique, which means you paint on dry plaster as opposed to guano, fresco, wet plaster. And um, oh, I have to tell you a funny story. Uh, years ago, an interior designer commissioned me to do this fresco technique on a, a, a copy of a section of the Sistine Chapel. Mm -hmm. So the process is I have a proprietary mixture of plaster and I plaster burlap and mm -hmm. press it down in there. And then I paint it, and when it's finished, I crush it. I get my uh, combat boots on, and I will actually walk on it. Oh, wow. Crack it deliberately. So my neighbor came out, and she looked over the fence, and she saw me doing this process. And she said, Patrick, Patrick, if you don't want that, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hand it my way. So I actually crush it, and then I do a glaze that makes the uh, cracks appear. Oh, these are beautiful. 
And now, um, here. and can you tell us about, um, about th these are all musicians? Oh yeah, Count Basie. And I actually saw Ella Fitzgerald at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh wow. The 80s. Nice. Yeah, she was fantastic. She was a oh, great talent. Yeah. And the um, kind of Sonia Eisenhower, that was, she's from South Louisiana. And so uh -huh. I think she drew a lot of uh, inspiration from her area oh. of the country in oh, the yeah. uh, in Maison 226. You can see it from the name even. So mm -hmm. many um, artists who are, who you might have seen in New Orleans at some time. And of course, uh, Louis Armstrong from oh, New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, Fats Waller. And there's a funny story about Fats Waller, uh, Al Capone, which is won't quite well. Oh yeah, hot a little springs. hot springs connection there. He wanted an entertainer, so he had his uh, fellows uh, kidnap Fats Waller, oh. <laughs> and he he uh, performed at his. I think it might have been his birthday party or something. Like that. And then uh, after they kidnapped him and he performed, they they paid him quite handsomely, and he ended up back home with a lot of cash. And, a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it sounds like he probably had a good time. And, uh, and, yeah. and now, um, did she select the artist for this, or did you? Oh, she. Uh, we kind of worked together, and she had great ideas. And I love the way they uh, restored the building and left the exposed brick. So there's a lot of, of really nice, uh, you know. Uh, Ambiance right. of the building and the Orleans. So there's a lot of other wonderful artists that work in there with the New oh, Orleans yeah. theme. So there's a good friend of mine, and I know she enjoyed collecting the artwork for the building. Yeah, and, they're really uh, nice people. And yeah. these are just when you walk in the main entrance of the building to enter all of the different um, uh, the suites or airbnb rooms they um these are there to greet you as you come in so um they're they're gorgeous um abraham lincoln is not there though yeah. <laughs> and now the, the work that now was this a commission piece or was this uh, this is a commission piece for a private library in uh, in uh, little rock uh -huh. and uh quite an interesting room uh you enter the room by secret bookcase that, oh, open, wow. that opens onto a large bank vault door, uh -huh. you know. And then uh, as you enter, uh, it's all a solid wood uh, cabinetry mm -hmm. and bookshelves with a beautiful fire. This hangs over the fireplace. Oh, wow. So the collector has, uh, he has several of my work and I've known him for like 30, God, it's been 30 years. <laughs> yeah, he's been collecting work and uh, he has a beautiful Bible collection, like 14th century Bibles, and a uh, collection of uh, Napoleonic uh, works. Now, yeah. do, you like, do you prefer to do commission work or to just do, to draw inspiration on your own? Oh, I like inspiration on my own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Then you know if you get it right or not. What's the biggest challenge of doing commission work? Well, I'd say portraiture because uh, there the you one little brush stroke off and it can throw it a miss, you know. Yes. But uh, I have several books with by uh, John Howard Sandin, who's a great New York portraiture artist, uh -huh. and I got a great piece of advice from this book. It sounds interesting, but um, when I get a commission for a portrait, I always ask for details on their personality, especially their sense of humor. And so when I'm painting their eyes, I kind of meditate on that. Oh, nice. And it sounds a little what I call woo woo. Well, <laughs> but it works. Well, but people don't want a, a photograph. When they oh, commission an artist, they want yeah. someone that captures their spirit. And yeah, that's what you do when that's you meditate key. on it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the key. When you do their eyes, it's really important. So. Well, you did a wonderful job on this one. I just love this piece. This oh, is thank one of you. My favorite pieces. Oh, of thank them. you. 
every work I, I drive myself crazy because uh, I'm never sure of myself. I, I'm very critical of my own work. Yeah. I see something that I did, you know, 20 years ago. I'm like, oh, can I have that back? Can I <laughs> fix it? <laughs> Do you ever have artwork that you can't that you can't part with that you have to keep because you you it's got so much of you in it? Mm, not really. Not really. You'll, you'll <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, now this is very different than your other. Uh -huh. Can you tell us a little bit about this piece? Well, um, I didn't really uh, plan an actual face. I just started painting and uh, got into the intricacy of uh, the contrast of, of light and dark and color. And then, uh, I don't know, it just evolved. Sometimes the spontaneous things work out the best. Absolutely. Now, yeah. was this a, is this a portrait of someone? Oh no, it just came just out came of my out. brain. Just uh, came out of your brain. Yeah. Um, well, it's, have you done, did you just do this one or have you done any more that, that are kind of like this or part of a series? Oh, this was part of a series actually. Uh, some clients in Chanel Valley uh, saw this and they wanted a like, real large one. Uh -huh. I think it was like seven feet by nine feet. Oh, wow, house. of this? Yeah. You, this with, a, with kind of a, more of a background too. Yeah. Wow. I was saying that was going to be my next question. How large this piece is? Now, is this oil or is it acrylic? Ah, uh, that's a mixed medium. I like to do a lot of them. I like to do oil over acrylic. Okay, so that's and so mm -hmm. you just do it. You paint it as you normally would an oil. An oil. Now, how long does it, does it take for an oil painting to dry to where, the point where you could do acrylic on the top? Oh, no, it's actually acrylic under the under, oil. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah. I should have said, would that work? Yeah, that wouldn't work. <laughs> that, okay. Yeah, you okay. always do oil over the top. top. Okay. But depending, I, I have several uh, glazes I use, different glazes. Like, I like to use a DeMar glaze, like you hear about the DeMar varnish. Mm -hmm. So I actually buy the raw crystals, a big bag of raw tomorrow crystals, and I soak them for a couple of weeks, and they dissolve, and then I add some other chemicals and make my own glazes, and they can dry anywhere from a few days to a week. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Well, it's beautiful. This one's very nice, and th this was very unlike any of your other work that I've ever <laughs> seen before, but this is... Well, now, now, is this of any of this style of artwork in any um, public collections or places that can be seen or is it just a private collector? Oh, I, I did a, a large one for one bank, uh -huh. a very large, like four foot by six foot in this style. Uh -huh. But I think, I don't think that bank's around anymore, so I'm not sure where it went. Okay. And then this is, all oh, the detail on this one is beautiful. Oh, oh thank you. I can see some places that need to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> now, when did you do this one? Well, that was like three years ago. Okay. And uh, this I just painted because I, I love the Sedona and the beautiful colors of the, you know, the desert. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like doing the reflection in the water. But after I finished this, this piece is four feet by six feet. And uh, this went to a diamond bank. Okay. Uh -huh. But you, you want to change things on it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Those trees need work. Uh, no. <laughs> Artists, you're your own worst critic. Yeah. Now this is gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Now tell, tell us about this piece. Okay, this was painted, I think. 1995, if I'm correct, mm -hmm. and it's in North Little Rock uh, by a prominent attorney's residence, and um, I uh, actually had a warehouse studio at the time over there by, uh, uh, where is that, Cantrell, uh, by the river, a uh -huh. big, big, huge warehouse, a studio, I was quite lucky. 
So I actually stretched this whole ceiling mural, 22 by 28, I believe, uh -huh. uh, in on three separate canvases. And uh, uh, I was inspired by the Renaissance paint right. uh, for the figures. Uh -huh. um, so what works out really good about this technique of painting on canvas and applying it like with wallpaper um, they were remodeling the room at the time. Uh -huh. So rather than have me uh, hurt my neck for paint on the ceiling. I know, I, I was wondering if you could <laughs> lay it on your back and paint it on the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah, I actually did this on a big wall in the warehouse. And while I was doing the mural, they were remodeling the room. So it only took like four or five days to put this up after the room was completed. So I didn't, I, you know, I inconvenienced the homeowner hardly right. at all. And then I uh, used uh, uh, glazing techniques, uh -huh. and the seams just completely disappeared. Uh, uh, using a thing called Dorland's wax. Uh -huh. Yes, and then and then over on the side there, you can't see it, but I did a portrait of Napoleon. He flew me to the Adolphus Hotel in in uh, Dallas uh -huh. to sit there and, and he tried to buy that painting uh -huh. and they wouldn't sell it. So he said, Patrick, go over there and copy that. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I sat there. Inspiration. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I went over there and sat there in the lobby and did sketches and things, analyzed it for quite some time. And then, uh, 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 over to the side there, he actually went to Paris and bought a marble bust of Napoleon. And the uh, decorator at the time was moving around and dropped it <gasps> on the floor. And it went, it had a, a, a big triangular chunk through the floor. It didn't hurt the marble. Oh, well, thank God. Yeah, right. but it went through the floor. Over here. <laughs> So I got over there with like some chicken wire and a can of Bondo, uh -huh. and I Bondo the floor and put wood grain in it, with wood oh. graining combs. Your talents, no, no, uh, you can get this guy's floor. And it disappeared. I don't think he ever knew it happened to own it. Oh, wow. <laughs> he might now. Yeah, I know. He might now. You could be careful. I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> now, have you done this technique other in any other? Oh, yes. Um, did it uh, at the uh, the vault. Okay, I was going to ask you uh, if that was the same technique you the used heist. at the vault. Yeah, at the, at the heist, it's called uh, upstairs right. of the vault. And then I did a ceiling mural downstairs in the vault room of the sunset, did the koi fish. So now yeah. what we're talking about here is the vault uh, restaurant. This is the vault 723. I think that's where it's called. I and, think the, so. and the heist upstairs on the second floor in downtown Hot Springs. Uh -huh. So when you're um, in Hot Springs for Gallery Walk, you there's a couple of different restaurants that have um, artwork in them. And the vault has um, several pieces by, by Patrick. So when you're down for Gallery Walk, you'll have to pop into um, the vault. Oh, and, great great yeah. food. Oh, very, very good food. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Brick House has um, some fun pop art um, oh, yeah. by um, Scully. I think it's anyway, oh, but some fun yeah. pop art. And then mm -hmm. down the Avenue, um, the Avenue Restaurant in the Waters, they have um, an exhibit uh, from uh, an artist or artist from Justice Gallery. So um, oh, it's great. nice that you know when yeah. uh, that's one nice thing. Um, gallery Walk. Uh, when folks come out for Gallery Walk, they they go to the galleries, but usually people stop at stop in somewhere and have. Uh, have dinner or have a, a drink after gallery walk. And so, you know, that's a nice part of our, our creative economy uh, contributing yeah. to our, our local economy with our restaurants. So yeah. uh, when you're out for gallery walk, stop by and see Patrick, but then pop over to the vault and see his yeah. work there. We'll have some wine. Oh, yeah. speaking of wine. Yes, look at this, <laughs> her on cue. <laughs> um, so to tell us a little bit about this series. Oh, yes. Uh, I uh, was interested in classical realism for a, a very long time. And this goes back to my interest in chemistry and glazing. And I love the uh, 
subliminal messages in the smoke reflections you know I, I love art that has like a story with it if you have a painting that has a story along with it it's like i like that and uh the one on the right of the this is uh my love of literature uh, mm -hmm. ernest hemingway books mm -hmm. and um that's actually my dad's law book under oh, that wow. one thing that i've saved over many years and uh like cigars, just once in a while. Yeah. And only a martini once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, and only one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh yeah, that's a title of cigar and martini with Ernie's Ernest Hemingway. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now um now how do you do so you set up the still life, do you set this up and take photos of it, mm -hmm. or do you so you capture the moment and then yeah. and then paint from that? Uh -huh. Have you ever done champagne? I would think that would be very challenging. You know, I've never done yeah. because there's lots of bubbles. In there. Oh, I need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Another challenge for you. Um, and that, yeah, because a lot of people think of still life just as a still life, as a group of uh -huh. a collection of fruit or or flowers. But these truly, yeah, they, they do tell a story. Uh -huh. And the piece on the left. The, Oh yeah, that's a. Uh, oh, I can't remember. It's a white wine, mm -hmm. and uh, I think this was in the gallery just one day. Huh. And um, the gallery legacy gallery has a beautiful floor. Just that the way they set up the it is thing, it's a beautiful legacy. gallery. It's, it's a wonderful space. Yeah, they did a great job. And the floor has that turquoise kind of marble feel. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, hey, I want to do a painting with that tablecloth uh, color. Mm -hmm. And then the, the contrast is, of course, the orange. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So I actually done several paintings with that, that tablecloth. Oh, they really? To go quite quickly. Like, yeah. That's great. So it's not in Legacy Gallery anymore. Oh, no. so somebody took it home with them. That's nice. Yeah. That's that's great. Yeah. Oh. Ongoing uh, face in my head. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think I've done maybe oh, dozens of this face versions. They're all different. Um, but I remember being struck by this when oh, really? many years ago when your work oh. was at Fine Art Center. Oh. And it was it was not this painting, I don't think, but it was so, one of this oh. one of these faces that's oh. like this. And I was just so struck by oh, by the image and the eyes. And now this is this is just your person and your but it's not an act. It's uh, did you have a model for it or was it? It was inspired by a Titian painting originally, uh -huh. but. Um, this is my uh, old master glazes. There's probably a dozen layers of glaze on this. Is that now? Is that what? Can you define for us what makes it um, a painting, an old master style? Oh yeah. Well, um, this technique has a Verdaccio technique, which is uh, kind of a, a muted green monochromatic underpainting, where you. Uh, do the structure of the face, uh, the chioscuro, which means lights and darks. Mm -hmm. So really you're focusing just on uh, you know, the shapes and shadows. And when you're completed with that, you glaze, slowly glaze layers of color over that. And that's what makes it realistic. Mm -hmm. the, the cool, warm and cool shadows. And now is this um, in a private collection? That's in a museum in Greece, Athens, Greece. Oh, wow. My sister went on a Greek uh, uh, cruise and she met uh, the, some people that uh, have this uh, museum and they asked me to do this piece. Well, it's, it's lovely. And well, that, thanks. Okay, and now we'll kind of see another version of this space. Oh, here yeah. yes uh yeah um now to challenge oh yeah now on the right that is your sketch 
correct? Yeah, it's a concept painting, actually. Uh, had to put a little books right in there. There we go. Let us go. Well, and it's, um, so you, you did not superimpose this over a photo. This was, you did the entire sketch of that. Yeah, that's an original painting. Oh, wow. That's yeah. lovely. No Photoshop for me. <laughs> yeah. And now this is located in the, on the back, uh, it's a Caracalla Plaza, Plaza mural, but it's on the back of the post office building downtown. Yeah. And it's currently under construction. I mean, it's, it's in progress right now. Isn't oh, it? yes. So can you tell us a little bit about the process of um, creating the mural? Sure. It started uh, uh, from the Thomas Megan and, and I uh, worked on a painting that was like 24 by 36. And uh, his uh, artist, Debbie Lee, loved it. So uh, they purchased it. And then he came back and said, hey, can you do a mural similar to this on my building? So we analyzed the building and the surface stucco was quite rough. Mm -hmm. And three quarters way up the building, it transferred from stucco to brick. Oh. Yeah, so we had a challenge. So we got, uh, he got bids on stuccoing, uh, just doing a smooth coat of stucco mm -hmm. to prepare it. And it was quite expensive. And I said, hey, why don't we use that texture of the building to our advantage? Uh, and it's all about contrast. So what I've done is painted the face on smooth hardy backer. Uh -huh. And it'll be, I think this will be Arkansas's largest collage. I oh, guess wow. you could call it a collage. collage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we're actually attaching the hardy backer face on it uh -huh. and then the red part of the mural will be rough stucco and then my wife helped me greatly with the it'll actually have real gold and metal leaf uh -huh. uh, uh, on the upper part which will be hardy backer so parts of it are smooth part parts of it will have the texture and now is that a chess piece uh -huh. the female energy the most important piece on it. Yeah, that yeah. was Thomas has, has some great ideas. That was his idea. He's a big chess player. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And what's the, what's is there on another building there as well, or around yeah. the corner? Yeah, on the back part of the building has a, a seashell. Okay. Because it's a caracol is a seashell kind of thing. Okay. But, but it's um, my friend who's an art historian. Uh -huh. um, looked at the process and, and uh, mentioned that uh, it, it's about a juxtaposition between old master Titian face uh -huh. and the influence of Gustav Klimt. Okay. So you have like Titian, who's like born in 1488, and you have Gustav Klimt born in 1862, mm -hmm. and merging those contrasting styles and making it work That's yeah beautiful. and um and then you a century later of course so ish <laughs> 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 that uh, yeah. actually draw inspiration from both of those to create a beautiful piece of public artwork in hot springs and yeah. i just have to i mean i am so grateful and appreciative to thomas nagan uh building oh, owners yeah. i mean uh this is too um our past two murals or really three murals that have happened in hot springs because building owners oh, wanted yeah. to i mean and you know a lot of people go well it's the building owner that it it doesn't make that much difference on property value if you have a mural mm -hmm. it doesn't it's just a beautiful addition and gift to the people who get to enjoy it because it's yeah, not just the building the owner city. and the artist who enjoys that painting it's everyone oh, yeah. who lives here everyone who scoots around the back to pull into the uh, post office parking lot <laughs> yeah. will be able to enjoy that and the visitors to our city um, as well the public art is such a wonderful growing part of hot springs so oh, yeah. thanks to thomas nakin <laughs> yeah and thomas is great to work with he's he's giving uh, several ideas of parts of the painting 
And so we have like a part of the background has the flower of life, an ancient symbol of a sacred geometry. Oh, wow. And then the swirls, uh, you can see some of those on uh, Native American petroglyphs. Mm -hmm. Gives kind of a, a symbolism of unity. So, and, and Gusak Plinth was a, a symbolism painter, mm -hmm. you know. So, there's a lot of symbolism in there. And uh, of course, the face, uh, going back to chemistry, uh, I've kind of worked out uh, a formula where I can glaze it like oil paint, uh -huh. except I have to use. Uh, acrylic because of the sun and uh, UV. Uh, you have to think of the, how long it's going to last and not fade. But layers and layers of polyurethane uh, uh, clear coat with UV protectant. Mm -hmm. But I've worked out a way to, to actually brush. I wanted it painterly, no airbrush. Right. I wanted to do it painterly, like a, just like a large oil painting and using glazes and uh, that seemed to work out good. Now, where are you in the progress right now, in progress with the mural? Oh, actually, we're uh, starting to actually uh, apply the pieces to the wall. Wonderful. Yeah. So now, when will, do you know when, what's your projected completion date? Uh, maybe about three weeks. Maybe. Yeah, how yeah, exciting. Yeah. Where you I hope you're not lift. getting out painting in the heat. Yeah. Or, uh, it's yeah. kind of hot this time of year to be finishing up a mural. We've certainly had our yeah. share of uh, oh, yeah. triple digit days. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we're, yeah, and the, uh, that's the other challenge. Uh, I was, um, at the studio, I put the face against this house that's being remodeled. I mean, Thomas was great in providing me with the studio to work on. I actually mm -hmm. applied that to the side of the building. And I had to get up at 5.30 in the morning to paint, get started painting just because the paint would dry so fast. Oh, because I had like an hour to paint. Yeah, to glaze it. Oh, yeah, wow. so. Before it gets too hot. Or yeah. I thought about that, about the heat making it, yeah. uh, causing that type of issues. I was just thinking yeah. about the physical limitations that uh, uh, heat, uh, you know, for the artists, not necessarily the artwork. But um, this is lovely, and I'm celebration of the mural when it gets finished, and uh, we can you know do something to uh, yeah, that would be fun. Yes, absolutely. I want to get a, a mariachi. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> have some tacos. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I agree. That's all, it always makes for a good party. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, so, well, we'll um, let's see, Paul. If you want to bring us back up here, I think we have wrapped up our. Um, our let's stop my screen sharing here and go back. See, this is where I usually have the technical difficulties. There we go. We are in the show, Patrick. Oh, Maybe my. I could have done I that am, earlier. I feel very honored. Thank you. Thank <laughs> well, you. thank you so much. Uh -huh. And just briefly, we I usually cover this in the beginning. How did you find your way to Hot Springs as an artist? Oh. Tell me a little bit about 1990, your 1990, I had some friends that uh, that came to visit here, and, and then my, uh, I uh, actually moved back to California in 2005, and I missed it here so much on my way back, and, and I always liked Hot Springs. Wonderful. Yeah. I always lived here. How, when did you move here the first time, you said? Uh, around 1990. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. Yeah, so 2005, I moved back to, like, Long Beach and, mm -hmm. and uh, South Bay and stuff. And one day I was at Trader Joe's and I saw uh, like a grandmother with a little grandson and he had a little cowboy hat on, little uh -huh. pistols. I said, oh God, how cute, little pistols. And she started talking to me and noticed she had an accent. And I said, where are you from? She said, oh, I'm from uh, Arkansas. And I go, uh, and I go, oh, that's great. I lived in Arkansas. She goes, that's why you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of an epiphany. And I thought, oh, I miss, I miss some people here. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's well, we're, great people. 
Well, we're glad you found your way back here, especially after you tried to escape. <laughs> now, have you always been an artist since you've lived here in Hot Springs? Oh, yes. Uh, That's, yeah. yeah. Pretty um, much stay busy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, mostly my work is just working out. So, yeah. And now, what's the biggest obstacle about being an artist in Arkansas? I don't see any obstacle. That's wonderful. Optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. And your work is at Legacy Gallery here in Hot Springs. Oh yeah. And um, and I think you have, do you have a website also? Oh, I do. I have artkarma.com. Art Karma, which is A R T K A R M A dot com. So you can see your other work there. Oh yes. And um, of course, will be a gallery box. Oh yeah. I I believe I'll have a new piece up there. Oh yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you mentioned that and I asked if you had I asked if you had photos of it so that we could share it here, but it's it's not yeah. it's not dry yet. Yeah, you have to put your signature. <laughs> have a put your signature. Yeah. Now, how do you know when it's time to put your signature on it? Oh, after pulling most of my hair out, <laughs> <laughs> it'll eyeball it um, many times. And then after you get it finished and you put your signature on it, are you still tempted to go back? I'm actually bringing some paint to the gallery to touch <laughs> up some things I see over there. Yeah. That. That would be, yeah, what a challenge, a, a constant challenge. But, yeah. well, thank you so much, Patrick. Oh, I enjoyed it. Thank you. Yes, I feel honored. Thank yes, you. well, thanks for being our guest. Sorry for the technical difficulty. Always As always. Good. Yeah, thanks to you. And thanks for the patience to everybody who watches. And um, Gallery Walk, August 5th. And uh, bring, invite your friends and come down, toast, um, offer up a toast at 5 o'clock to celebrate 33 years and um, thank thank our gallery owners and Patrick and all of the other artists that you will see at artists opening during gallery walk and um, for a full schedule of, or full listing of the galleries that I mentioned today or the galleries who, will take, who are taking part in gallery walk go to hotspringsarts.org that's hot springs arts with an S on it, .org, and uh, click on the gallery walk um, little tile on the homepage, and it'll link you to um, the listing of the galleries. Or you can go to the Hot Springs Area Cultural Alliance Facebook page. And if you do that, like it and share it and comment on it, because that's how we um, try how we try to help get the word out about Gallery Walk. In addition to, of course, thank you to the library for helping us not only um, let, let people know about Gallery Walk, but also giving us this platform so that we can get to know some of our local artists like Patrick. So thank you so much for oh. to Paul and all the folks at the Garland County Library for all they do um, to make Hot Springs a great place to live and for all of the community and organizations like um, like the arts community that appreciate um, what, what they do. So thanks so much and we'll see you at Gallery Walk.